standing in front of my freezer today because I realized last week that while I was digging through my freezer for, I think I was looking for some corn, I realized there was things in there that I didn't even know I had. I realized there's been things in there for a really, 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 really long time, which I feel like freezers potentially can have some buried treasures, treasures, treasures treasures that word's freaking me out right now anyway some of this stuff is probably freezer burned i don't know it's not good in there i mean it's not like horrible but it's not it's not great this is my freezer currently i didn't do any editing before you arrived this is my little stasher bag of all the food scraps i collect during the week first thing that is popping <laughs> out to me are these popsicles these have been here probably for two years. I got those exclusively because I was sick one time and wanted something for my throat. I'm feeling a little guilty throwing out these popsicles but I looked at the expiry date, May 2022. That's so embarrassing. What? When do these expire? These ones are still good. Just have this random chunk of ice. I'm just gonna defrost that. Oh my. Why do I have this bag in there? It's empty. Another one that's empty. This expired in April of 2022. That's so bad. Okay, I did a little outfit switcheroo because I wanted to be comfortable, but I've cleared out what isn't working in that freezer. I always recommend buying frozen diced onions. This saves you when you don't have onions on hand and you need onions. I mean, like every dish needs an onion. And quite honestly, I don't like chopping onions. If I can avoid it, I will. So this is just fantastic. Corn and some chopped kale. So this is the veggie stack. I'm not sure if this looks super organized to you but this makes a lot more sense i've got some of my alternative meats here this is my frozen berry section so i've got berries and cherries and these are strawberries i've got cookies smoothie packs ice, 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 ice. highly recommend getting fish shaped ice because it's a fan favorite and then here are my tropical fruits like mango and frozen pineapple these are my veggies i've got corn peas carrots I think this is kale. Got some random bagels here. And then on the door, I have more ice in a stasher bag. Some frozen bananas, popsicles, and my stasher for all the things that I cut and don't want to put in my garbage bag so it doesn't stink up everything. So nothing crazy happening here, but I feel like I can see everything. I know what I have now. The project probably took collectively around 30 minutes and it just adds so much more functionality to my freezer. I've been meaning to do that for obviously quite some time. So sometimes you just need to stop waiting and just do it. It's crazy how that works. This is a Tony Robbins line where we overestimate what we can do in a year but underestimate what you can do in a decade. Well, I think we often underestimate what we can do in 10 minutes and overestimate what we can do in an afternoon. Like, I think that's such the case with organization or cleaning. We think, okay, once we're in the mood and we set aside a few hours, we're gonna do this, 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 and and transform this space and it's just you're just gonna get it all done but it's, it's actually quite draining when you try and take on a lot at once but if you break it down into smaller chunks 10 minutes can actually be quite powerful i know this is like more like 30 minutes like that's an integral part of my kitchen that just became so much more functional and it wasn't like a huge amount of physical labor that i had to exert or energy that i had to exert it was just literally getting rid of what i didn't need replenishing what i did and reorganizing things with a little bit more logic i think it's a little bit tougher to like add super organization to a freezer because any storage bin at least with my case my freezer's not that big so if i were to add even bins or something to keep all the fruits and veg in i think i would lose out on a lot of space purposely don't do that because i just don't see the point of like lo losing out on that prime real estate that prime cold real estate it is evidently a laundry day this is load number one i've got load number two and three in the dryer i've got load three and four in the washer we are doing a lot of loads what's happening this is a reminder take my vitamins actually i do need to do that hold on Mmm, tasty. Anyways, the laundry was just atrocious, so we need to we need to tackle it. It's getting done. Let me just take this moment to give you an opportunity to show gratitude. If you have laundry in your home, in your apartment, in your house, just know that I know laundry is never exciting, but that is prime gratitude moment because laundry is already not fun, but when you have to add in lugging it around, uh, it adds another layer of... <laughs> I am about to make a green smoothie. I've been slowly but surely getting back into it. Starting off by adding some green spinach. I do the claw method. One claw of organic green spinach. I've got all my frozen fruits now ready to go. 
half of a banana. Ta -da. I have these bananas on my counter. I'm actually going to freeze these and not turn them into banana bread, which is a habit I've been into the past couple of weeks. I've been letting the bananas go bad and oops, I have to make a banana bread. So we'll do this instead. Strawberries. Oh, those smell good. Look at that. I just want to munch on them. Just a sprinkle of pineapple and some mango. And back in the freezer, these goes in an organized fashion. Just adding some water. I don't want it too runny. Ooh, this is awkward. You're behind my chia seeds, but I'm gonna add some chia seeds to this as well. Chia seeds are so fun to scoop up because they just glide nicely. They are not fun to clean up, so make sure you don't miss the carrying device you're putting it into. Speaking from experience. For safety, give it a little shake, a love shake, and we're gonna blend. When another loves another, we are blending. If you if you know the movie reference there, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> uh, it's amazing what energy doing something on your to-do list gives you. Please hold. <laughs> It was at this moment that I had the realization that I looked like that kid from the E.T. movie, which was deeply disturbing to me because E.T. continues to be one of my least favorite movies of all time. It provided many nightmares for me as a kid. I just could never trust that raisin. Et voila. Ooh, uh, fragrant. I do have a takeaway moment here in regards to the smoothie because I feel like I'm getting the vibes for February of getting new year energy, or I should put it, I'm getting this feeling of like, finally getting back into my healthy habits. And I like this revelation that I'm ha having because we're heading into February. We are, you know, fully into 2023 now, no doubt. It's at this point where a lot of people get discouraged and drop off on their healthy habits. But I think what's been really powerful for me this year is I didn't put a huge amount of expectations on myself at the beginning of the year to change in all these different areas of my life. <laughs> I was like getting into that discussion, but I realized if I don't let that thing soak, it will be brutal to clean, so. Oh yeah, smoothies are just so much better when you have a variety of fruits in there. Back to my original point. I think at the beginning of the year, my main focus was just, hey, let's do the 30 days of yoga with Yoga with Adrian, which today is the final day. So that was like my main focus of January in terms of like health was, okay, let's just get back into moving regularly because obviously during the holidays, you're just not, at least I wasn't doing as much. And as I've been ending this yoga journey, I've started to feel like this excitement to start doing my hip workouts again and more intense Pilates because like this yoga has been it's been tough and has challenged me but it's been more slow and focused and like mindful as well I've been meditating afterwards with the calm app so like it's just been a, a different workout experience very good for the soul though but I'm feeling that excitement to move my body and challenge it a bit more which is exciting because that's when I feel at peace with my body too, is when I'm pushing it. Last week I started the process of just like getting myself back into smoothies. You guys know I like started experimenting with oatmeal at the beginning of the year. So it just feels like everything's been like a nice slow ease back into the regular healthy habits that I know make me feel good. It's really, I've just given myself space in January to ease in and I felt that natural compulsion to get started and continue, which is nice rather than that, uh, okay, let's get to it energy that sometimes I think we can have. Uh, I know I have given myself that kind of treatment many times in the past and will continue to do so going forward, but not being so like, oh, I need to have changes immediately, I think has big impact. That's the reason too why I'm feeling compelled to do some organization in this apartment this week. I'm glad this part is over because this is probably the hardest part about but my laundry experience is putting all these clothes hanging out all on that drying rack. I don't quite enjoy it because it's a lot of taking things out of inside out fashion, finding socks that match together, laying out my underwear properly, you know, all the things. <laughs> Excuse the background sounds of my dishwasher going off. We finally finished the laundry. Can we talk about the color of these sheets? They are beautiful. I don't know, on camera I might be coming off a bit more brownie than in real life. It's a true olive green and I'm gonna make my bed with these because I want to feel like an olive. Who doesn't, right? The fact that I went from like only ever buying white bed sheets to like dark green 
moody vibe. Am I just getting older? Is this like how people feel like about olives in general? When you're younger, you're like, oh no, ew, yucky. And then as you get older, you get more sophisticated. You're like, olives are actually the best thing ever. That was my experience at least. Oh, yeah, that is not dry. no idea how happy i am that i got this done the laundry was escalating to a point that was going to be uncomfortable and you know what i was right it was uncomfortable but it's done i'll probably just do this whole cycle again and not learn from my mistakes okay this is the duvet this is the double sheet large sheets by yourself is in fact an art. I'm missing a sheet. Right? Oh, there you go. Oh, perfect. I totally forgot that I folded this one. We'll be right back. Ugh. adore this. I like that change. I know there's the overhead light on right now. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's helping you out. No, I should just turn that back on. It's so cozy. I think it works, guys. This looks a little medical over there. Ignore, for for for. This pillow still works nicely there. I don't love this guy. Oh, wait, I might have an alternative. I think this needs to turn into that. Oh, that's boring. Ugh. It could turn into this very dramatic i'm not sure do pink i think that's the best one i don't know what to do with this guy though i feel like he looks off here but i might just need to suck it up buttercup you know go in there please 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 ah, ah, ah. cozy 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 and there's the bed a lot about how my word of the year is explore and I feel like right now I'm in like an era of exploring with the nonfiction reading that I'm reading lately the nonfiction books they have been so good if you follow me on Instagram or Goodreads and you know that I have finished The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel if you are in your 20s 30s I mean I think anyone really can benefit from this every chapter is about a new like money tip money concept money lesson it's more about the psychology of money your your thought processes with well mindset shifts you have to have to like transform the way your relationship with money functions it's not so much about technical advice or insights about how to like invest or build wealth it's more about like what mindset you need to be able to look for those opportunities really easy read even though i've read a lot about money and done a lot of learning about how to make my money work for me there were still concepts in here that even if they weren't new they were said in new ways and i also think there's pieces of advice in here that are relevant not just towards money but to all areas of your life like there's a really great chapter about comparison he uses the example of like someone desiring a ferrari you think oh this ferrari is gonna like make people think i'm so ahead of the game that i'm successful we have a lot of romanticization behind what owning a possession being seen owning a possession will say to others about us less so about what it is but more so about what it represents but if we see someone with a ferrari we're probably not going to spend much time thinking about what that means about them we think what would it say about me if i had that thing like we're not even preoccupied as much with their image as we are with our own i love this line there's a paradox here people tend to want wealth to signal to others that they should be liked and admired but in reality those other people often bypass admiring you not because they don't don't think wealth is admirable but because they use your wealth as a benchmark for their own desire to be liked and admired that's such a powerful thing to understand when it comes to wealth but it has application everywhere in life and it's just one of the many reasons why like that comparison game can be so dangerous and the chapter ends humility kindness and empathy will bring you more respect than horsepower ever will so anyways I wanted to make sure I brought your attention to this. I have started The Myth of Normal by Gabor, uh, Gabor Mate, or is it Mate? I should have really 
figure out how to pronounce it. He's on enough podcast interviews I should know. But it's The Myth of Normal, Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture. She's a big book, I'm not gonna lie. It is a bit intimidating for a nonfiction book for me to be this size, it's 500 something pages. But I think a root focus of it is the idea of trauma and how trauma manifests into having big influence on our physical health. And it's just so fascinating. I keep reading each chapter and I'm like, oh my God, this is so interesting. It just reminds me why it's so beautiful to learn. I love just taking time to learn new things or to just be open to new topics I hadn't really considered before. And I mentioned this on Instagram stories, but in the first couple of chapters, uh, he mentions the links between trauma and self-compassion and shame and shame and self-compassion. I've, I've read other nonfiction books in those categories. Um, Brené Brown does a lot of work with shame and Kristen Neff had that book of I read last year called Fear Self-Compassion that was mwah, so good. And it's really cool to see all concepts come together. And then I started watching a podcast this morning about hormonal health for women featuring, let me actually see, I started notes on it. Dr. Sarah Gottfried on the Hubberman Lab podcast. I'm about half an hour into it. She touched on trauma a bit, but like also diet and also hormones, the relation to the cycle, which I read about in, in the flow. And I love when you just start deep diving into nonfiction work or as I have in like these different areas of well-being, it's cool to see so much overlap happen because it just feels like as you consume things, it's just different puzzle pieces of the puzzle coming together and being reinforced. And I find that addicting because I'm just like, oh, what more can I learn about this? Or what? how can I expand on this topic that I've been introduced to? Excitement levels are high. I just love learning. And I think as something that's so important as you get older, whether it's about health and well-being or money or or learning a new hobby or learning a new language or just trying new things whether it's as simple as a recipe or a self-care ritual like i don't know this it can be small big but like learning to constantly like pushing yourself into new spaces expanding exploring it's so powerful at keeping that childlike wonder in you and it's really hard to do as you get older too because we obviously have other responsibilities some you know people who I'm sure watching this have the families, kids that you're responsible for and like jobs where your hours might be insane and that's the last thing you wanna do is spend extra time learning. You just kinda of wanna mentally relax. But I think if you can be intentional about like finding little pockets of it, I just think it's a really awesome way to spice up your life. So I'm very thankful that nonfiction reading has been my method of finding those opportunities to learn and educate. Podcasts, YouTube videos, documentaries. I did ask on Instagram, like what are the ways that you make learning more of a regular part of your life post school, like outside of the school environment. And it was really interesting to hear some of your thoughts. So if you have any methods that you use that you'd love to share, I would adore hearing about it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll move on from this topic though because I, I just went on for many, 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 many minutes about nonfiction books and learning. Hopefully I didn't bore you with that, but current read, past read. There's so many areas of my apartment that I adore, but the one that I don't is the shelving situation in my kitchen above my air fryer. It never leaves me satisfied. It just doesn't have any strategy. And I like a lot of the individual pieces. I like my little container. I like my European-esque sugar bowls and garlic holders, cookbooks. But then there's also a few things I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like it's coming together nicely. I need to reassess. Let's go, let's do a quick rearranging. This is what I settled on for these shelves. It is not perfect. Honestly, I don't think these shelves ever will be. There's something about them. I feel like the height of them that makes it really hard with cookbooks. Like I can't, I can't put any of these cookbooks vertically. It's just too short, which it feels odd because this shelf feels like it should be able to withstand a vertical cookbook, but it doesn't. It really doesn't. But I did try to separate them out a little bit so that there's more of like a balancing effect happening. Same with my onion, garlic, and potato tins. I thought maybe separating them out would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to look at. Also take note of 
my Portugal souvenirs. Actually, this is from my grandmother's kitchen, uh, but that's a souvenir, that's a souvenir. I feel like there's like some sort of balance between traditional and like more modern happening here. It's not executed very well, but uh, in theory one day I'll be able to nail that. I like the idea of having old school looking things combined with more modern pieces, but I'm just so limited here, I don't know. We're mildly happier <laughs> with how this is. This is kind of fun. I did put some of my coffee beans in one canister and some cinnamon sticks in another right next to the potatoes, which is actually my coffee pods, as you guys know already. And then my air fryer's down here. I just put my candles on top of this cutting board. And uh, yeah, I also am so over these fake plants from Ikea. I will get rid of them one day. I just uh, have nothing else to put there. So I figure it's better there right now than not, but I, I can't stand it. Crazy how you can just like something one day and then absolutely despise it the next. I'm scared 